Hello everyone, as you have previously seen in part 2 of the tutorial series, we could extract slope and flow data from the height map which was downloaded from Esri servers and enhanced with natural filters such as erosion and terrace. We then used these extracted area masks to texture our terrain. As you remember, we have set the terrain rendering mode to standard which uses Unity's built-in terrain shading. Now to start off, let's head to the terrain tab and change the rendering mode to Terraformer. By doing this Terra World's advanced terrain rendering features will be unlocked which we are going to discover them all in this video. To reveal Terraformer's high-end features we should expand the rendering toggle, as shown. Keep in mind that any settings in this section operates in real-time and brings live changes to terrain rendering using GPU shaders, so there is no need to regenerate your world if changing any parameters. In surface tint section, we can give our main terrain and if available our background terrain's color tint to match its surface colors with the scene lighting and mood. In this case, I'm going to reduce the brightness on tint color to remove the overexposure effect created by sunlight. We'll skip tessellation feature for now as we will get back to it later throughout the video later. Heightmap blending defines blending contrast between textures based on each terrain layer's displacement texture to take out organic shapes and textures in a more natural way. To better understand the effect of height map blending on layers, we'll jump to some of the features and use them which we are going to explain later. Let's turn on tessellation temporarily and set the settings to the maximum quality so that it can be shown better. While having the tessellation feature turned on, some settings will be revealed for layers so that we can define the amount of GPU tessellation and height offset for each layer. In this case, I'm going to set tessellation displacement value for the last three layers so they will take a three-dimensional shape based on displacement data in their mask map's blue channel. Here we see the difference tessellation brings to the terrain by adding more depth to the surface. Now by changing height blending value, we'll notice how each layer's shape is taking out on surface in the form of blending contrast and by the result of it, rock shapes pop out of terrain. As you see, height blending makes a huge difference in terms of having layers in a more organic shape and distribution. Let's have a closer look at the surface and compare it with and without height blending. In color map blending section we can define the blending between the satellite image as color map and the tiled textures based on given distance to camera. This will greatly help in taking the terrain surface and scene visuals close to the real-world location. While procedural snow is enabled, we can go to the VFX tab and find procedural snow section and change snow start height from there until we find a good height for our snow to start in our world and on terrain surface.
by going back to the procedural snow section in Terrain tab, we can change parameters to set up snow distribution on surface as desired. Let's leave them as default for now as I'm satisfied with it. Procedural puddles will help making your scene shiny and interesting by adding puddles on flat surfaces procedurally and adding reflections on surface. This effect is handled by scattering puddle areas on flat regions using noise and adding smoothness in those areas. I'm going to change the color of puddle's surface to make it look a little bit muddy. To bring life to our puddles, we will add real-time reflections to our scene so that they look natural. First we are going to add a dummy object to better understand the reflections on surface. For the real-time reflections, we are going to use post-processing which is embedded in the VFX tab. By pressing edit post-processing button, we will be taken to the inspector window to edit post-processing features. Let's activate screen space reflections and change the maximum march distance from 50 to 5000. Keep in mind that changing the distance value in this section will not affect performance or the impact is very small. As you notice, there are real-time reflections on puddle areas now and this greatly improves visuals for a more realistic scene. We can now focus on changing each painted texture on terrain in terrain layer section under the terrain tab. As you see, the terrain layers which were previously painted on terrain can be controlled from here.
Let's review the picture we have already taken from terrain splat mapping and texturing. First, we need to set parameters on the terrain layer asset itself in order to define general settings for the layer. Clicking on the terrain layer slot will take you to the terrain layer asset. For this first layer, let's change the normal intensity to 1.5 and tile size to 5. Now that we are all set for the terrain layer, we head back to the terrain tab and expand settings toggle for more options. Let's change the tiling remover value which will eliminate tiling for more organic distribution of texture on surface using GPU noise. We can also change each layer's tint color to do color correction on each texture which is an important step for matching the surface with scene lighting and mood. I have already assigned and tested some parameters for each layer in a text file so that I can use it as a reference. Now let's set up each terrain layer settings as we did for our first layer while we are getting live feedback in scene view. In the end, let's activate tessellation on terrain and by doing this, new parameters will be revealed on each terrain layer section. For testing, we will increase new displacement parameter value in layer 3 of our terrain which is painted on steep angles so that Terraformer uses layer's displacement texture to extrude and tessellate surface.
keep in mind that this technique only happens on GPU so physics will not be taken into account since physics and collision detection are CPU based operations. In addition, activating DX11 tessellation on terrain is a heavy operation on GPU and affects performance greatly so use it with caution and consider these limitations in production level. Based on these limitations of tessellation regarding performance and physics, I'm going to disable tessellation for our terrain in this world graph. As the last note, to save all the settings we have made for Terra World interface in our graph, we can go the Area tab and press Save Graph button to export and save a graph file out of all settings for later usage or sharing between projects or other Terra World users. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something. Stay tuned for our future videos.